the ESO Crown Store. You either love it or you hate it. There's no room in between. Or is there? Is it possible to have a nuanced opinion on what is arguably one of the most exploitative cash shops in the gaming industry? Let's dive in. Right at the very top of your screen, when you go to your menu, of course, is the Crown Store. And it is complicated. There are like eight different options just from there. Really, you're only going to need to worry about three or four of them. Starting with the store itself, which has something like 10 tabs. It's horribly misorganized and rife with opportunities to waste your hard-earned money on stupid, stupid things. Like, for instance, die stamps. No self-respecting motherfucker buys this shit. That's retarded. Some of the wardrobes, like the mask packs, like the, you know, they're still selling this for the same price they have. It's years old now. It's ugly as sin. It's not worth that at all. Not in the slightest. You kidding me? 2,000 crowns for that? And then let's go ahead and get to the crates. So these you can get, wow, four for 1,500 or 15 for 5,000. And if you're optimizing your crowns perfectly, that's at least like 25 bucks for those 15 crates. Or you can get this amazing recall where you look freaked out at your own magic and 25 crates for only 8,000. Now, I am not knocking crates. Crates are actually the only way you can get the legitimately good cosmetics in the store. That's my first tip right off the bat. Anything in the store that has in front of it the symbol of the crowns, instead of crown gems or seals of endeavor, in almost every case, it is a ripoff. It is not worth it. If you don't want to grind for the gold and you really want a house, that's one of the rare exceptions where I found that virtual real estate for me for certain houses is worth, you know, 40, 50 bucks, whatever it costs. That's my personal assessment. I feel like versus the gold grind to get over a million gold in many cases, it can be worth it. Furniture packs. Where this gets interesting is when you're in your house, you can buy individual furnishings that are often pretty drippy for a very small, like between like 10 and 100 Actually, there's there's some furnishings in the house that cost like 400, 500 crowns, but they're like really micro, micro transactions. But the stuff in the actual menu here, really not worth it. In almost every case, same with style parlor, crafting. Are you really going to buy research scrolls in the shop for literally 5,000 crowns? Maybe you are if you're really into crafting. My point is that there are endless ways to waste your money in the ESO crown shop. But let me explain how this all works. So say you do buy a whole bunch of crates, like 25. Opening up those crates, it says you're you know guaranteed to get four rewards. And what that means, you get four Apex or Radiant Apex rewards. They're almost always Apex, and those are almost always mounts, and the mounts almost always suck terribly. Like, let's go ahead and look at, yeah, like, look at this. These are the Apex rewards, right? These are supposed to be so great. No effect when they load, except the fact that you suddenly stand on them for no reason when you're looking at them in the shop. I mean, that's a, such a waste. Uh, these can actually be a pretty good bargain. I like uh, this particular part of the crown shop where you can use your crown gems, which we're getting to that, to get some pretty good skins. I've bought those before. Uh, it's actually kind of like a bargain area of the crown gems, or if you have a ton, but not quite enough to reach for those Radiant Apex mounts, you can get a Constellation prize with this thing, which at least, you know, it makes this big windstorm when it appears and it looks pretty, right? It goes with the Spriggan. I have the purple version of this, and it's a horse. So I think that's worth it. So you're looking at, like, this one, right? And this is what is actually, you know, valuable. And by that, I mean when you're just hanging out in a social space and someone pulls this out, or you're in Cyrodiil, and people are switching between their mounts, and this thing shows up, you're like, damn. Like, can't help but be like, damn. That's the point. Is you're like, damn, in the sense of, like, that's beautiful. Like, they obviously put a lot of creative capital in designing that particular, you know, skin, mount, whatever you want to call it. But also, people know that it's, like, pretty hard to get. So how do you get it? There's a very, 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 very low chance of actually rolling one of these in a crate. I've had that happen to me once. I've opened, you know, maybe 150, 200 crates over my career with ESO. 
I mean, I've spent a bit, but not like some people who've opened, you know, 10,000 crates, right? But in that span, I have had one Radiant Apex mount just appear like magic. And it's cool when that happens and you just thank God and you move on. Otherwise, you're going to get 2,500 crown gems. So, assuming you get yourself some crates, you then go to the crown crate shop and this creepy Khajiit guy here. And then if you have items that you get that you don't want, you go to the extraction screen. And then you can extract these for crown gems. And the higher the level of the thing you're extracting, the more crown gems you get. If you open 15 crates, you usually get at least, I don't know, three to 500 crown gems. There are certain items that appear like resplendent sweet rolls that you can cash in for even more. Really, crown gems are one of the two only reliable ways to get high ticket items in the shop. Like say you really like Indrix, you might want that. It's a little bit less spendy. It's only 1200 versus the 2500 crown gems. So that they're saying if you get 15 to 30 crown crates, uh, you know, at a price of you're putting in probably 50 to 100 bucks, you know, um, well, you know, let's say less than 100, right? You're pretty much guaranteed to get something like this. Well, a mystical quasi griff. I mean, this sometimes people have, uh, you know, said they've spent five hundred dollars and still not gotten this. And I think you kind of have to be an idiot to do that. Generally, if you're dropping uh, two hundred dollars or more on crown crates, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to get one of these if you extract all your gems properly. Now, if this sounds insane and exploitative to you, yes, it is. And if this was all there was, the crown shop. I would hate it and so would everyone else, and with good reason. The only reason we're all pacified is what is called the Seals of Endeavor system. Now this is a cornerstone of the method I'm going to be describing for using the Crown Shop to get mounts like these without spending all your savings or not being able to pay your student loan payment, wherever the hell you know people's problems are with money these days. And you can. It takes about five to eight months, approximately, to run through enough seals of endeavor to get the high ticket items in the shop now what are endeavors what are seals of endeavor every single day resetting at around 2 3 a.m pst you will have new daily seals of endeavor netting you between 30 and 45 or you'll have they're called endeavors and they'll net you 30 to 45 seals of endeavor so over a seven day period that is between 210 and let me do my math here uh and around 300 something uh endeavors per week and then you also have weekly endeavors that are worth between 220 and 300 every week so basically on a weekly basis you can get around 600 seals of endeavor and then recently i've noticed that in the daily login rewards which as it sounds you just log in and you collect it they have also been putting Seals of Endeavor in there. Last month, it was just a lump of 500, I think, on day two. They're really trying to get people into the game, I think, uh, during this period where we're awaiting expansions. And no, this is not a resplendent sweet, sweet roll, which would give you 400 crown gems. That'd be absurdly uh, generous, I believe, for ESO and their track record. No, you just have to go through the week or the month, and then you get around 400 Seals of Endeavor also just by locking in. And that's on top of the weekly seals that in this week gave you 300. So really over the course of a given month, you can expect to, especially now with the shop or with the, uh, sorry, daily rewards also giving you endeavors, you can expect to get at least 2000 per month. And if a Radiant Apex mount, such as Galarian's Indric or Mystical Quasigriff, which you see in the Endeavor shop costs the same amount. In that case, of course, you're going to go for the higher ticket item that is 2,500 with crown gems, and uh, the other one is only 1,200. You're going to go for the mystical quasi griff, and you can save up for that if you're only getting 2,000 a month in about eight months. Now, you can also speed that up, like I said, by doing every single daily. You know, you, can, you might be able to speed that up to around 700 a week, especially with what they're giving out. You may be able to get to about 800 a week. You're maxing it out, and that means you have about 3000 a month, in which case you will be able to afford that mount considerably sooner. But on average, this means that 
every six to eight months of playing the game, you can get yourself a new Radiant Apex mount in the store if you are willing to resist that long or if you've made certain strategical decisions. Now, I looked at this array of crown crates this month. I was really not impressed. When there are a lot of items that I really like with, with the previous crown crates, I will buy crates and I will roll them and I will get the crown gems and I will trade them in for what I want. Kind of like, you know, playing games at the Chuck E. Cheese or whatever as a kid and you get your tickets and then you go trade them in for whatever you want on the shelf. It feels a lot like that. But there's only about two things I want. And by the time these crates are out, I'll be able to get this mask as well, which I think is pretty drippy. It's something I want. But the only other thing I wanted was this meteor mining customized action, which, you know, I don't I didn't have a mining action before this. So I went ahead and bought it with the 3600 endeavors that I had. So by spending zero gold, or I mean, by spending zero crowns or, <laughs> you know, real gold, the US dollar used to be backed by gold by spending zero US dollars. I was able to get something that I really like out of the crown shop. And I just did something like that about two or three weeks ago. And yeah, that makes sense because I went down to zero and then that cost 3,600. So over the last two weeks, I've gotten around 2,000 more. Um, and that's because they were pretty generous over the last month with the endeavors they were handing out, etc. So it's not like it's an exact clock i mean you can sit there and really plan it out over the next few months if you want to but sometimes you will get kind of a lump sum of endeavors seals of endeavor uh, sometimes the endeavors themselves will be more rewarding so just keep an eye out for those login rewards or when endeavors are more rewarding and then start stacking them up up to sixteen thousand. now did it make sense to spend 3600 on just this customized action not really. I could have kept saving. But the point is that I looked at these crates and I wasn't going to buy anything. And so usually if I buy crates, over the course of buying the crates, you will get more than enough gems to get things like this or that fox mask that I was looking at. And so you wouldn't buy it with your endeavors. You'd save them for the Radiant Apex mount. But given how I can farm endeavors relatively quickly these days and the fact that there weren't any mounts that I really wanted to chase for with this uh, series of crates. I'm just going to wait for the next series of crates, which they come every two to three months. And during that period, they also re-release older crates again. They rotate them back into the shop. So maybe at some point when those come out, hopefully aligning with the upcoming crown sale, which I'll be talking about next, I will have something I want to buy. I will buy, I will buy crowns when they're on sale and I will chase them out and in the process get whatever lower ranked items just happen to come across my plate or that I want to spend my gems on if I don't actually get enough for the mount and I don't want to spend any more real money on crowns. As I just mentioned, occasionally crowns go on sale. So you go to buy crowns and it will take you to the PlayStation store on PlayStation. It'll take you to the Steam store if you're playing through Steam, etc. Right? But you will be taken to the shop and you will be taken to a place where you can buy crowns and generally it's pretty expensive uh, you can get around 20,000 crowns for around 150 bucks but that goes down to 100 bucks when they're on sale which usually coincides with the anniversary festival which is coming up so I am waiting for then and then if at the same time as the festival occurs which these usually do overlap they re-release crates that I really like I will go ahead and buy the largest number of crowns possible and I will buy a bunch of crates and hopefully get them out through that process. So for me, because I do occasionally when crowns go on sale, buy them in large quantities and roll for mounts at that point, yes, I do gamble. I'm not that focused on Seals of Endeavor. Honestly, I have never cobbled together enough Seals of Endeavor to buy a Radiant Apex mount. Every time I get close, a new crown crate comes to the shop and there are things I want without wanting to gamble. And so I buy them that way. And then when I come across crates that I really like, I save my gambling for then. Which, I mean, it is actually kind of fun. I don't like the crate system. I mean, there's no self-respecting gamer who would say he likes it. But also, I mean, there's no denying that gambling is something that human beings have done since the dawn of time. And there's something fun and kind of entertaining and even, in a way, spiritual about it. Lady luck, so to speak. So from time to time, 
when it's economically reasonable, I choose to do that. But I saw a bunch of people when crates came out, maybe they stayed at their endeavors, I don't know, who just suddenly had the new mount. I know there are a lot of compulsive spenders and what we call whales out there. And I really encourage you not to do that because not only is that bad for you financially, but it sets a bad standard for the developer where they're rewarded not reasonably and at times when are opportune for you as a consumer, but whenever they can manipulate you into buying something new in the shop. And this is what I mean with my overall ethos is try to game the shop as much as possible. And it's undeniable. There are some really beautiful things in the crown shop. And you don't want to just completely avoid that. I mean, my crown, my eyes, my skin, my bear, Ember's bear, my pet, those wouldn't exist without the crown shop. And they can blend into your earned cosmetics in such a way that your drip is taken to an entirely new level. I think it's something that should be part of the game. It's not like we should get rid of the crown shop entirely. I think that even crates are a good part of the game. What I would suggest is that the developers continue to make endeavors more rewarding. I think every player should be guaranteed to have enough to get a Radiant Apex mount every six months or less. And right now, that's pretty hard. It's really about every eight or nine months, unless you are really playing this game every single day and being on top of your endeavors, which takes altogether maybe up to 10 minutes a day, maybe up to 30 minutes a week for the weekly ones even longer depending so it's a re relatively big time investment on a weekly and monthly basis and the people might skip a week or a day and then it takes a little bit longer and that's just the way it goes so i would really encourage zos and microsoft to continue making endeavors more rewarding maybe even lower the ticket price of certain crown shop items especially their crown gem price there are things that could be done to improve it but really your worst enemy here is your own stupidity or ignorance. Not the game, not the developers of the game, just you making bad decisions. Do you blame the casino for existing, or do you blame your own inability to control yourself when you lose money? Well, maybe you do blame the casino, and then you probably shouldn't be watching this video because there's no reaching you through your wall of stupidity. But for the average rational person, it's the same thing. But sometimes people just don't see that because of bias, because of the community, because people just getting upset and looking for a scapegoat. The crown shop in ESO, I'll leave you with this, is only as bad as you make it. And as long as you wait for sales, use your crown gems appropriately. I forgot to even mention, they often give crown crates out for free in the daily rewards as well. You can get maybe 10 or so per year. And you might get some good stuff in there. Sometimes in those, I get things that are worth 33 or 100 crown gems. And that's awesome. I've never gotten a Radiant Apex mount from that like my friend did when he just first started playing ESO. And, you know, sometimes God plays with you in that way. I invite you to look at it that way instead of luck. Look at it as a conversation with your deity of choice. Because that is who controls chance. And if you are meant to have something, God will give it to you. And if not, just have faith and trust in his plan. Gamble on, stop gambling, pour it up. It's up to you. I would just encourage you to not be stupid. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope that this helped you understand the Crown Store better. If you have any questions, if you differ with me on any of these points, if you had any points you'd like to add, I encourage you to add them in the comments below. I do try to respond to every comment to make you feel heard, and I really do enjoy the community as well, hearing your voices. So I appreciate each and every one of you, as I always say. Thank you for watching. See you next time.